Hey everyone, I'm Teresa. This is my channel, Lost My Thread. Today I'm going to be telling you about my upcoming sewing plans. I did a video like this a couple of months ago about what I was hoping to make in the autumn. It is now officially cold. I want to move into my winter wear, some more cozy items. So I'm going to tell you everything I'm planning to do today. So the first thing I'm going to be telling you about today is not actually something that I'm making for myself, it's something that I'm making as a gift for somebody else. Most times, I think pretty much every time I've made something for somebody else, I've made it as a gift. Okay, I can remember one other example that was a Halloween costume. But most times I've made something for somebody else, I had to keep it all under my hat, try and guess the size, usually go for something a little bit more oversized or with a little bit of stretch to it if I don't get it quite right. And this time around, it's nice because I'm making something that I can actually work on the fit and get it just right for the person that I'm making it for and get them involved in the whole planning process as well. So this all came about because I was talking to my husband about wanting to make a shacket. So if you do not know what a shacket is, you are just like me. I was interested in it because I found out what it was. I had never heard of this before. So a shacket is a cross between a shirt and a jacket. So think, if you think like a kind of a lightweight, over layered button down t-shirt that you're gonna put over like a t-shirt or like a tank top or just basically a, an extra shirt that you can throw over and I was telling my husband about it and he was actually very interested in this idea and said that he wouldn't mind having a shacket. That sounded like a good idea, something that he would like to have in his wardrobe. So I offered to make him one because A, it's a fun project. I'm always looking for sewing projects. And B, it's just nice to make something for somebody um, you know, that you, you know they're gonna want, that they're gonna love because it's something that he's asking for specifically. Um, so yeah, it would be a fun project as well, I will say, because as I said, I've never really fitted something to somebody else that much. I mean, it's not a super fitted garment, but nevertheless, just getting the fit just how I want it and how he wants it, I think will be an interesting challenge for me. His shape is obviously very different to mine, so I had to measure a man's body for the first time, so his measurements are pretty different to mine, so it was interesting just to see where the, where the different parts of the body kind of curve and things different from my own. It's kind of a no brainer, but anyway, it was, it was fun and interesting just to see the differences. So I'm planning to make the wardrobe by me men's overshirt. I've never made a pattern by wardrobe by me before. I just really liked this shirt. There's not a ton of men's patterns out there as many of you, many of you probably know. And I was looking at some different options and this one seemed to fit the bill of what he was talking about a little bit more closely. So when I asked him what he wanted from this jacket, he was saying that he'd like a kind of lumberjack jacket style thing. And the more we were talking about it, it sounded like he actually wanted more of a coat because he wants something that's gonna be a little bit warmer that he can maybe wear in the winter months, obviously with like under thing, other things underneath like sweatshirts or sweaters underneath. And I thought, well, if we're gonna do that, we're gonna need to probably line it. This is not meant to be a lined jacket pattern. This is just meant to be literally an overshirt that you put over another shirt. I will put some pictures up just so you can see what it looks like. I would say that this pattern company doesn't seem to have actual photos, like photo shoots as part of their pattern. So the photos that they have on their website, I believe are photos of other people, maybe the test makers, um, final products. And I don't really want to show other people's personal photos, but I can show you the line drawing so you get an idea of what it is, but it's just a men's shirt pattern. So it's a fairly standard men's shirt pattern. Like I said, a little bit more oversized. Most women's jackets that I've made, I think have had like a back vent for a little bit of extra space. This one has got two side vents and it's a button down. It's got um, options for the pockets. I'm actually gonna do uh, two sort of patch pockets on either sort of chest, each side of the chest. And I'm actually gonna add a little flap button closure for the top of those, which this pattern doesn't have. I would say as well, this one has got facing. It's not necessarily designed to be lined, so it'll be interesting. I'm gonna line it with some warm fabric and we'll see how that goes. It'll be my first time lining a jacket that doesn't have lining in the jacket instructions, if that makes sense. So it'll be a challenge, interesting challenge overall. I'm gonna be making the muslin pretty soon, so that'll be one of the next things I make. But the final product will take obviously a little bit longer because I've got different elements to kind of piece together. So I'll show you the fabric that we're gonna be using that he's chosen. I really do like this fabric. I'm 
pretty jealous and I could just snuggle up with it right now. This is a beautiful brushed cotton, cotton flannel fabric that I got from So Me Sunshine. It's a great color. It is super snugly soft. I mean, really, really cozy. I think in and of itself it would be a really warm, nice over shirt anyway, but just because he wants to wear it outside rather than just inside is why I'm going to add a little bit of extra layer to it. But it's a really great plaid pattern. I think in the UK we call that check or tartan. I don't know the difference between tartan and check. I'm calling it plaid because that's what I would call it. But yeah, it's, it's a really nice kind of classic lumberjack looking fabric, which is what he wanted. And the lining, I'm going to go with this. Oop. This is a pre-quilted, so it came quilted, cotton polyester fabric. So this one I got from Stoff and Still. Yeah, it was Stoff and Still. Sorry, it took me a minute to kind of decide was that where it definitely was from. Um, and as you can see, there's like a little quilted layer in the middle. It is really warm. I mean, I can tell this is gonna make it really nice and cozy. So we'll have that on the inside. It won't be really visible from the outside, but I think it should turn out to be a nice project. We will see. It should. I'm, I'm hopeful that it will turn out well and he loves it. And the next thing I'm going to tell you about is I'm making another pair of the Chi Town Chinos. So I did already make two pairs of these. So I made a pair of shorts in the summer and then recently I made a pair of Chi Town Chino trousers in a plain cotton twill fabric. I have now chosen another fabric that's another cotton twill but with a tiny bit of stretch to it. So the first one I actually was really satisfied with. So the, the first pair I made was a stretch denim pair because that was just the fabric that I found that I loved. The second pair was a woven cotton twill without any stretch at all. And I felt like that really challenged me getting the fit right. And I am really happy overall with the fit of those. I love the look, I love the color, I love the um, well po pockets on the back. So I'm gonna be showing you some photos so you see what I'm talking about so you know what I'm referring to. But I did want another pair for sure and I thought it might be nice to make a pair with just a tiny little bit of stretch to it because these ones do fit me, but it's just the thing of like when you're bending down, when you're squatting, when you're, I don't know, kind of sitting cross-legged, those kinds of things, you just start to feel a little bit more pulling in certain areas where it's kind of squishing you in. And it would be nice to have fabric that has just that little bit of extra give to it. So the fabric that I'm gonna be making it with is this really lovely light blue stretch cotton twill that I got from Sister Mintaka. So it doesn't have a huge amount of stretch. I mean, I wanna say it's maybe, uh, two or four percent elastane so you can see there's definitely some give to it but it's not like it's gonna be you know super stretchy it's not like jersey or anything like that but it will just have that little bit of extra wiggle room when I am maneuvering around when I'm wearing them I'm not planning to size down with these because I do feel that the fit is really good with my trouser version I will do a base fit because this pattern recommends doing a base fit anyway. And if I feel like it is just too big, then I can just obviously take the some of the side seams in or something. I'm already planning as well to take a little bit in from the back seam. So the trousers that I made before, they do fit me well, but as I wear them over time, I can feel that the top of the waistband isn't flush against my back just because of the curve of my bum. It doesn't quite sit flat against there. So I will just taper in a little bit at the top of the waistband when I'm making them next anyway and we'll see how it goes with the stretch down with the stretch um, twill cotton twill I think it should work out and be a really cool pair when I make those ones I'm actually planning to put together a little tutorial video I do love sewing tutorials I love to watch them particularly when I'm planning to make something I feel like it's just nice to see somebody else doing it particularly if you have any kind of sticky bits every project I feel like there's usually something where I'm like having to read the instructions a couple of times and I'm like Wait, are they saying her turn it this way or the other way? And I don't know how that's all gonna come together. So I, I'm someone who does look towards tutorials if I get a little bit stuck on something. And I thought, well, if I like to see them, I'm sure other people like to see them as well. I'll put mine up with some little chapter headings so that if you did wanna just leap straight to the welt pockets, for example, you can see how I make those. Because this is my third pair, I feel like I'm pretty confident I know what I'm doing there. So it should be a pretty good one to do a little tutorial for. So if you'd be interested, do watch this space that will be coming later on. And I had also been thinking about how to cozy myself up a little bit more since it's gotten colder. 
I don't have a huge amount of sweatshirts and sweaters these days that are not pretty old and worn out. So I had made a plan this year for 2020 that I wasn't gonna be buying any clothes. If I needed clothes, I was gonna make them. And so when I decided that I needed to sort of soup up my winter wardrobe, I was gonna have to be making those things. So I decided to go ahead and plan to make a hoodie. I am a big hoodie fan. I like to feel cozy at home. I have a little bit of an extra layer that I can throw on. I prefer a zip up just because I did have some, well, I've had some ongoing problems with one of my shoulders for the last, I don't know how many years, few years anyway. And when I am getting to the end of the day and I try and take my top off over my head, it can be a little bit sore and it can hurt my shoulder and be pretty awkward to get these things off. So I do prefer a zip up option. I will say as well, if I'm gonna be potentially taking layers on and off like you do, if it gets a little bit warmer and cooler in the day, zip up for me is just the preferred option for a hoodie. So I'm gonna be making the Sinclair Patterns Journey Raglan hoodie. I've not made a Sinclair Patterns pattern before either, but it's one that I've heard good things about. I've seen a lot of really cool makes of theirs on Instagram, so I felt like I wanted to give them a go. And this hoodie kind of fit the bill with what I was looking for. So it's a raglan style sleeve, and it looks like it should be pretty straightforward to put together. One of the things that drew me to this pattern as well is I heard a lot of the people who have made them really raving about the way that the zipper is installed. So the way that they describe putting in the zipper makes it really neat and is really simple to understand. And I'm always a sucker for its sort of unique construction. I do personally get a lot out of seeing when someone has a different, unique, and possibly better way of doing something. So I thought it would be a good one to just attempt myself. So the fabric that I've got, I am really, really excited about. This is a great black and white stripe French terry fabric. I love the thickness of the stripes. I feel like black and white will go with everything, so it's pretty perfect for my needs. And like I said, it's a French terry fabric, so you can see on the back, it's got that loop back on the back. I do like French terry because it's nice and soft, but it has a little bit more weight to it. It's, it's a little bit heavier than like a cotton jersey or even a sweatshirt and I feel like often those are a little bit more lighter and I, I like the idea of having something that kind of sits on me in a, in a nice way. It makes me feel kind of cozed up in a good way if that makes any sense. It makes sense in my head so I don't know if it will make sense to you but I do really love this fabric. This is um, one that I got from myfabric.co.uk. I got it because I knew what I wanted in my head. I had this vision, decided, yep, I need to make this. I had a little search around and managed to find it and it is perfect. It is exactly what I was hoping for. Now, I obviously can just make this for the whole hoodie, but I did think black and white, mm, a little boring. Maybe I should throw in a little pop of color. So I've made a decision I'm gonna use a contrast fabric for the inside of the hood. And the one that I'm going for, the one that I'm hoping to go for, is this really wonderful cotton jersey fabric. This color is called Petrol. I love this color. I really, really love this color. So I got this actually for a tank top. I made quite a few tank tops in the summer. I think it was the summer before I last actually. And this is a scrap that was left over. I'm hoping I've got enough to make the hood, inside of the hood, and possibly even the facing out of it. If I can't get it all, I'll try to at least get the hood bit because I really love the way this color pops against these stripes. I think it looks really, really cool. If it turns out I don't have enough for all of that, I do have an alternative that I might consider. And that is this fabric, which is left over from a Mandy Boat tee that I made. And it's, I mean, it's stripes on stripes, which is possibly too much, probably too much, maybe. Maybe I could get away with it. I haven't I haven't quite decided. This is my first choice and it's all about if I have enough left over basically. But this is my plan B. And I think whichever of these I use, I think will work well for my general idea. And just to make it even extra fun and exciting, I've actually bought some cuffs, some cuffing for this. Most times when I've made a sweatshirt or something like that, I've actually just used the same fabric itself, um, sort of folded over to make a band at the bottom. But I thought it would be really cool to have something, again, just to add a little bit of contrast along the cuff of the, the bottom edge and of the sleeves. And I've got this really cool cuffing from Sister Mintaka. So we've got some black and white stripes and we've got some of these kind of similar color stripes as well that will go with either of these really well. And I think that will turn out really cool. There's also a reverse side to this. 
So I could decide to do that instead of that. We'll see, I think no matter what I decide, I think it's gonna be pretty awesome. So I'm very excited about this project. So that would be a nice one to have and just be able to cozy up with. Now one other project, I'm calling it a project, but it's kind of three projects in one that I'm planning. I'm not gonna give you too much details about because I don't wanna give you any spoilers, but it's something that I'm planning to do for this channel. I had the idea of making some button-up shirts, some women's button-up shirts. I am somebody, and many of you out there will probably be in a similar position. Because of my particular shape, I do often find it difficult to find something that fits both at the bust and the waist and the hip. So, not both, but all three, basically. If I have something that fits at the bust, it's usually too big everywhere else. If I have something that fits me kind of lower down, usually it's kind of popping open at the bust area. Even when I've made like shirts and shirt dresses, I've usually had to put some buttons on the inside to make sure that it all stays closed along the bust area. And I do have one ready to wear shirt that I have bought that actually fits me really well. It's from a British shop called Pepperberry, which is designed for women who have a bit more of a curvy figure and you actually choose different kind of essentially bust sizes, depending on the size of your bust to get a really good fit for you. I've never made anything that I felt particularly fit me in that way. And I feel like button up, button down shirts are a little bit more awkward for FBAs. They don't always have darts where you think you'd want them. So I thought it would be a good one to maybe have a go at trying some pattern companies that I'm less familiar with that have different bust size options. So the idea that I'm gonna just try out, see how it goes, is compare three different button down shirt patterns from three different pattern companies all of them having different bust size options. So in theory, I should be able to just pick my size, make it right out of the packet with no extra adjustments. And then I can compare the different patterns and decide what I like best about one, what I like best about the others. And I'm planning three very different shirts with very different style lines. So I think it should be an interesting little comparison between the three of them. I won't get into the specifics because like I said, I don't want to give too many spoilers, but I will show you the fabrics because I have picked out my fabrics and I think they're all really cute. So the first one that I'm planning to make something with is this cotton poplin. They're all cotton poplin and I got them all from Higgs and Higgs. I thought it would be good to be consistent to make sure I'm having similar fabrics just because obviously different kinds of fabric are going to massively affect the, the drape and everything of the clothing. So this is a really cute... I almost want to call it like a brick color. It's like a, a lighter brick. It's like a pinky, orangey, red kind of tones with these really cute little black hearts on them. Think what I like about this and what I like about this general kind of pattern is that if you're a little bit further back, you can't necessarily see that they're hearts, so it's not necessarily super in your face. But when you get closer, you can see it. So it's just kind of subtle, cute. I think this would be a really sweet shirt. I also wanted something that was a bit more plain, just like a solid color, just because I'm trying to pick different things for the different shirts. And I've got this really fantastic color, blue. So this, again, is a cotton poplin, and it's just a really beautiful, vivid color. I really love it, and I am excited to have something in it. Not that different from the inside of the hood. I'm obviously a fan of that kind of really bright blue color. And then the third one that I've chosen is a floral. So I did want to have a ditzy floral, like a small scale floral print, because I do really like that on a shirt. I think it's a really pretty detail. And this specific one that I've chosen is mostly like a primary colors, which I think is really fun. So it's mostly yellow, blue, and red. And it's got some little other colors in there. And I will show you some little birds as well as little flowers. I think that would be a really lovely feminine option. So it'll be interesting to see which ones I pick for which design of the shirts. And I'm not quite 100% sure yet in that. The last thing that I'm making is probably the one that I'm the most excited about. It was something that I was excited about the minute I saw this fabric. I'm usually someone who buys the pattern first. So I buy a pattern or I have a vision in my head of what I want to make. I'll find the pattern and then I will see how much fabric I need of it and buy the fabric. But occasionally a fabric just strikes me and I need to get it and then I can figure out what I'm going to do with it. And this is the case with this one. So this fabric is a viscose jersey and I cannot get over the colors in this. They are just so beautiful. <laughs> this fabric I saw is from the Fabric Godmother and when this went up on her Instagram, she shared it. And when I saw it, I thought, 
okay, that is really knockout fabric. Went to have a look on the website just to see, okay, how much is it? Do I really want this fabric? Do I need this fabric? And I showed it to my husband and his immediate reaction was, you need to buy that fabric, buy that now. Which, I mean, come on, how often are we gonna get that kind of an okay? He obviously saw what I saw in this fabric. I mean, the, the, the drape of it, it is super lovely and lightweight, beautiful viscose crepe. But honestly, it's the colors. The colors are what get me about this. So most bright floral things that I've seen with like a darker background are usually navy blue. And I like that this is a black one, so it's gonna be more different from other things that I've made before. But this is one that I, like I said, I'm so excited. I've actually already cut it out. So this is actually a skirt piece that I'm showing you, which is why I don't have a whole big bit of fabric to show you. This is the skirt, set, one of the skirt sections. I'm making the Sew Over It Eve dress. And I have made this dress before. I will put a picture up to show you what my other version is like. But this is gonna be pretty different. So the one that I made before is made in a medium weight velvet fabric. And I do really, really love that. It's got kind of a big floaty sleeve. But this one, I'm gonna be making in a much more drapey fabric, as you can see. And I'm also gonna go for a different sleeve option. So the, they do have a sleeve option that's kind of a similar length to this. It's like a three quarter or elbow length sleeve, but I'm actually extending it out all the way to the wrist. And I've done a bit of slashing and spreading, and I'm gonna add a little bit of extra gathering around the wrist. So I'm gonna add a couple rows of shearing elastic around there just to get a little gather there. And there is some gathering on the top of the bodice, so I feel like it will tie in really nicely. And I think it's gonna look really beautiful and elegant, and I can't wait to get that one done. And because this is something that I've made before, I know it fits me really well, I know it's really quite straightforward to make. So this is probably the next finished garment that I will have from this little plans. Um, so yeah, if you wanna see that once it's done, it will be up on my Instagram. All these things, I will post them on my Instagram channel. I am at lost my thread over on Instagram. But of course, I will also show you sort of a roundup at the end of the next few months, just to show you what I have made. Some of it might vary, obviously. There are other projects that sometimes come into your mind that you weren't necessarily planning to do. But I will give you a little catch up to see how it all goes in a few months from now. So if you did like this video, I really would appreciate if you give me a little thumbs up, like the video, and if you wanna see more of my content, then do subscribe. And please leave a comment. You know, if you've got any thoughts on any of my plans, any suggestions on things that I'm talking about, I would love to hear from you guys. And I look forward to seeing you all again soon. Bye.